broken those who always wanted your land, who your forefathers drove away some years ago. How can they be in love with you to give you your food? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back again to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about a prophecy released by Reverend Dr. Chris Oyakilome to all Africans for us to be alert and vigilant because the white men are planning a very bad things for the Africans, we Africans. From his message, he said that they are planning to strike Africa with hunger in this coming 2025. Now the plan is already on ground to hit us with hunger. This is to tell you that this is a demonic plan. A plan to deprive your fellow human the privilege of having food in their house. We all know that food is one of the things that God blessed human with. It is a free thing. But from their plan, they are trying to make our land to be infertile so that we will not produce anything except from the seed they will give us. That is to say they want to subject us again to be their slave and rest of them. Just watch the video if you have a parent who is a farmer, please do well to advise them and also share this video to everyone so that they will know what their plan is actually about and know how to escape them. And please let all of us be watchful and pray so that we will not fall into the victims of all these bad people. Thank you and if you are new to my channel, can subscribe, don't forget to turn on the notification bell icon for more videos. Some of these things to you from the book, from the Bible. I show them to you. And one of the evil things they're doing right now is a fake scarcity of food. It's currently fake, but they're working on making food really scarce. First is the fake smoke screen. All right, so the smoke screen, there's a lot of food. But then it's because something is being done to make food unavailable and under the control of certain powers. And this is why you're going to have to be very, very careful um, because many countries, particularly in Africa and Asia are being pressurized to accept seedlings with a lot of promise. They're telling them to receive seedlings with a lot of promise. And they send out professors, agricultural professors to lie and tell them you're going to have greater yield than you ever had in your life greater yield you're gonna have such big watermelons it'll make your head swell you're gonna have tomatoes like you never saw in your life big sure sure they're gonna have big tomatoes sure they're gonna have sweet watermelon like sugar right yeah they're gonna have it they're gonna have oranges like never before but they've been genetically modified changed yeah for good no hold on Hold on, I want you to think. Hold on. Now you get the tomatoes, you get the corn, all right, maize, you get the oranges, and they have been modified in such a way that you cannot plant. You can't have them on your own anymore. They'll destroy your farms. 
they'll destroy your own produce. You can't have your oranges anymore. There's ones that are shipping into your country. And then, and you're given seedlings that you can plant this one. They've been programmed to produce for you once only. And so you have to go back to the government agency after your harvest. You can't have another one. If it's programmed to make it only twice, you have it only twice. So you come back to the government and ask for seeds. And if they don't like what you're doing, you don't get no seeds, no food. But that is the smallest part of the problem. I'm telling you, that's the smallest part of the problem. This thing that I'm just telling you is so important that I've got to show you some scriptures as we get along this week. What's worse is that with this modified fruits and vegetables, you will be targeted, meaning that with the mRNA that is introduced into these fruits and vegetables, whole communities can be targeted that can determine their lifespan. They can be eating those things and they are designed to eliminate targeted communities. And they can tell from their drawing board that in five years, all the people that are like this, a certain kind of people, will be eliminated in that place. Don't be a fool. Let me ask you a question. How can those who always wanted your land who your forefathers drove away some years ago and claimed independence from them. How can they be in love with you to give you your food to sustain your life? Are you kidding? Are you all right? The imperialist mentality still subsists, still there. It's not over. They never forgave you for your independence. They never forgave you. Make no mistakes about it. There was one statement that was made. We will return. And that statement is not over. And nobody knows that statement better than Claude Schwab. The World Economic Forum. So, don't think that giving up your current vegetables and your organic oranges and, and so on, and eating this, you know, I, I, I told you, I, I like the seedless, the seedless grapes. Right? I like the seedless, seedless grapes. They're nice. But I know that they are nothing left anymore. You take those grapes and there's no nourishment. You don't get anything. There's nothing. You might as well just drink Coke. That's what it is. It's nothing. Your seedless grapes. Your seedless... Uh, oranges, tangerines, all of these things. All those modified blueberries, strawberries. And they're all coming from outside your country. They love you so much. And you believe it. They so love you.
So you need to talk to your... All, all they have had to do was to offer... I, I, I told you about the kleptocratic technocrats. No? Kleptocracy is the government or rulership or authoritarian organization of thieves. Who have been brought into positions of authority to control whole communities or nations. And so much has been done. So much has been done through siphon treaties siphon treaties and in in the associations and organizations and fake aid programs aid programs so we're going to look at some of those things and see what does the bible tell us what does the bible tell us what are we supposed to be thinking? How can we know these truths? How can we know? How can we know? And I'm telling you, this is why the devil hates the Bible so much and wants to get rid of the Bible. But um, they cannot be successful in their attempt because this is the day of the church. This is the day of the church. And whether they like it or not, it's our day. It's our day. It's not their day. It's our day. Their day will come, but not now. Not now. Not now. There's a time for them. And that time will come. The timeline, God's timeline is very clear as to what he wants today. And our job is to ensure God's timeline is what we're living in because he gave us the authority for it. Let me explain to you. In the book of Genesis, he put Adam in the garden and he said to him, take charge of it. The Bible says he asked him to dress it and keep it. To keep it meaning to take charge of it. And he let the devil in. He let the devil in and listen to the devil and you know uh, the rest is history should have never let it happen he was told to be in charge of it that was his job but he committed high treason against God for letting the devil control him should have never happened and we in our day must not make the same error he has given us the name of the Lord Jesus he told us watch and pray. 